This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 5, Section 3, Physics and the Quantum Mechanical Model. In this section, you're going to know the relationship between wavelength and frequency of light. You're going to understand the atomic emission spectra, and you're going to explain how frequencies emit light that are related to the changes in electron energies. So, have you ever seen neon signs? I'm sure you have. Um, just to let you know that when you pass an electric current through those gases, and there's different gases in neon signs. So the red ones are probably filled with neon gas, but your blue ones and your yellow and your purples and your greens, those are going to be filled with different gases because when we have different gases and we give them some electricity, they're actually going to give us their own characteristic color. So in this section, you're going to learn why each of these gas glows with that specific color of light. These two guys, which you've heard of before now, Bohr and Schrodinger, along with Einstein, they actually developed these quantum mechanics, right? Those were the quantum numbers came from. But they were actually bewildered by their own theory of what's called the wave-particle duality for the electron. So we're going to talk about how this electron and light have both wave properties and particle properties. So pause the video, fill in the blanks, read as you write, and then play to hear my words. So Newton thought that light consisted of particles, but then in 1900s there was enough evidence to say, well, light really consists of waves. Uh-oh, a light bulb went off, ha, 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 and we know that there are particles of, I'm sorry, there's property, light has properties of both particles and waves. And because of this, they form what's called the electromagnetic radiation, and we already know that light moves at the speed of light, right? That's how fast it moves, and we'll talk about that. But electron also have properties of both particles and waves. So these are the parts of the wave. Again, read as you write. It's easier for me to explain this by actually showing you the parts of a wave. So after I'm done explaining, you want to pause and write and draw the parts of a wave and label it. So the first thing I would draw is this line, and this line is really the origin. Remember that an origin is our starting point, our ground zero. Okay, then we're going to draw a wave, okay, and definitely you have to have at least two hills. The top of the hills are called the crest, the bottom of the hills are called the trough. When we get to the zero mark or the standard mark to the top of the crest, or we could actually do to the bottom of the trough, because that distance is going to be the same, is called the amplitude. Then if we take the distance between crest to crest or trough to trough, that's going to be called the wavelength. So make sure to draw those in your notes. So then what is frequency? Well, frequency is the number of waves that pass through a given point per second. So it's really the per second that's the units for frequency. So the speed of light is a constant, which will be given to you, and the formula is C, which is the speed of light, um, equals wavelength times frequency. Okay, so lambda times nu. Now, I don't write the times in there, but again, with algebra, you don't always have to. You should know that they are going to be multiplied with each other. So one thing to remember is the units. Again, wavelength is going to be in meters because wavelength, right, it's a measure of length, and frequency is S negative 1. So I can give you wavelength, and you can figure out frequency or vice versa. And we'll do this in the next part when we do the practice problems. So how are wavelength and frequency related to each other? Well, it's an inverse relationship. As one goes up, the other comes down. So there's going to be these different frequencies of light, and they're going to give us that variation of color. But there's a wider range of frequencies than just that visible light. The whole range is called the spectrum. So let's talk about these two things. First, let's talk about the fact that there's an inverse relationship. That means one goes up, the other goes down. Well, if I look here, this is a given point from this, uh, this line to the end of the line. I'm going to measure this wavelength. Well, to me, this is a rather long wavelength. So the longer the wavelength, the lower the frequency, the lower the amount of waves that can pass through that point. So let's look at the other way. Again, the same distance here, but now my wavelength is much shorter because look how many waves can pass through that area. So short wavelength, high frequency. Again, there's a space in your notes to draw these differences so you understand them. So what's this 
electromagnetic spectrum I talked about. Again, it's going to give us a wide range of wavelengths and or frequencies, and it goes from radio to gamma. You've heard of radio waves. You might have even heard of gamma rays, and it includes this visible light or the rainbow that we can see. So in your notes, again, wavelength is given here, not the frequencies, uh, but some do. So you're going to have from ra radio waves to gamma rays, and it gives you these measurements of this um, low frequency to high frequency. And I like to remember this by the L's. What do I mean by that? Well, this is going to be the left side. So I'm going to focus on the left side here. And on the left side, we have low energy. We have low frequency. We have long wavelength. So I like to remember all the L's. So again, you might want to put that in your notes somehow. So these are our frequency values. These are our wavelength values. Again, if we're going to use that equation, if I give you a wavelength value, you can give me a frequency or vice versa. And again, this, way, this visible light is going to be really important too because we're going to talk about the different energies of the different colors uh, that are given to us uh, by those like neon signs. So light is also a particle, right? So if we talk about energy, light is energy, it's moving, um, but it's also quantized. And if it's quantized, again, we're going to give it a quantity, like those quantum numbers in um, the last section. So if we talk about the atom, let's look, talk about that atom again. So if I take an element and I break it until I get to that atom, that's going to be the smallest particle that's going to identify that element. Well, the same thing kind of happens for light. If I can kind of take that light and because it's a particle and chop it up into the smallest particle possible, that's going to be called a photon. So energy and frequency are directly related to each other. In other words, they do the same thing. So then what is this white light? So let's take a light bulb. We're going to pass it through a slit and a prism and we're going to get the, oh, we're going to get Roy G. Biv. We're going to get the rainbow, but we're going to get them all. Hmm, we're going to talk about that in a moment. The other thing to remember is that when we're dealing with objects that have color, like this red shirt, really what's happening is we see the red because that's the color that's being reflected. In other words, that shirt is actually absorbing all of the other colors and all we see is the red. Again, we're going to talk about absorbing later as well. So if we look at this white light, okay, it gives us the entire spectrum and it kind of separates into individual wavelengths, but we want to remember that this is continuous. It goes from red to purple continuously. But how about light that's not white? So let's say we take something like this that kind of like looks maroonish, purple, magenta, whatever color you want to want to say here, but uh-oh, look at what's happening here. It is not a continuous spectrum, so not all the wavelengths are present. Huh, very interesting. So this is actually what happens in this atomic spectrum. This is what happens in those neon lights. So we have a particular gas in there, and we're going to give it some electricity, or we're going to heat it like we're going to do in the flame test lab. And it gives us different colors. So each element is its own characteristic color. So that's why we can actually use this to identify atoms. So let's take hydrogen, for instance. We have it in a tube. We give it a little electricity. We cut it through the split, a uh, slit, sorry, put it through the prism. Uh-oh, notice here, this is what we call the emission spectrum, and we do not get a continuous rainbow. So we can kind of identify, if we have this and we put it next to um, a bunch of spectrums that we have, we can actually then identify that uh, gas in this lamp being hydrogen. So every line spectrum has its, its very unique to its own individual element. And the mirror image, this is why I talked about that red shirt, is actually going to be the absorption spectrum. So we can have the line, the emission spectrum, or the absorption spectrum. So we like to also call this the elements fingerprints, right? If you think about your own fingerprint, it can help identify you. Same thing with these spectrums. So different spectrums of different elements give us different fingerprints so we can identify that element. So do you see the difference? Hopefully. So now let's talk about the atomic spectra. Hmm, how are we getting these different colors? Well, 
Electrons like to be in their ground state, but when we give it electricity or we heat up those electrons, they're going to move, right? And they're going to absorb that energy you're giving them from the heat or electricity and jump to a higher energy level. And actually, that's not the big deal. The big deal is when they return to their lower energy level, they're going to give us light, and that light is going to be in the form of color. And remember, those are called those photons, right? Those little specks of, of pockets of energy is going to give us that light as a particle and we're going to see different colors. So kind of like fireworks, right? When they go up, it's no big deal, but when they come back down is when you hear the oohs and the ahs. So we talked about electrons moving and if electrons are moving, that means they have energy. So again, that light that's emitted from that electron is going from that higher energy level to a lower energy level. And you guessed it, we now have an equation. So energy equals this Planck's constant, again, which will be given to you, times frequency. So now we can use this to also relate frequency and energy. So let's again, let's get that better explanation of this atomic spectra. So electrons going to start in its lowest energy level. Those electron configurations tell you where that electron is most of the time in its ground state. So let's look at this hydrogen atom again. It's the simplest atom, so that's why we do it only as one electron. We're going to give this hydrogen atom a little bit of energy. Well, that electron now is going to jump to a higher um, level. And again, that one electron, again, we have a whole bunch of atoms, right? It's not really just one. So that electron, depending on how much energy that um, electron absorbed, is going to go to a different energy level. Again, that really wasn't the big deal. The big deal is when that electron comes back down, it's going to give us that photon of energy in the form of light. But remember, this may not happen just in one step. This might happen in different steps, and that's what's going to give us these different colors. So let's say that electrons jumping from 2 to 1 is going to give us the blue. From 3 to 1 is going to give us the green. From 4 to 1 is going to give us that orange. And let's say it goes just from 4 to 2 is going to give us the red. Ah, so how do we relate this to that emission spectrum? And I believe this is in your notes, so just wait until I go through the whole thing. So if we look here at 657 nanometers, what's happening is there's only one jump. Hmm. But here there's a jump from energy level four to energy level two. Well, that's two jumps. And over here in the violet, ha, that electron's really jumping from five to two. So what's happening here is, hmm, the lower the energy, the longer the wavelength, the lower the frequency of that electron jumping from that high energy level to a lower energy level. Level. So at this point, you want to pause and make sure you fill all that in and write anything else you want. So again, this is a little bit more dramatic. And to show you how the farther that electron falls down, the more energy is given off, the higher frequency. And we also want to remember that this is really simplified, right? Because those orbitals even have uh, different energies inside those energy levels, right? So we're just specifically talking about energy levels, but we know then those energy levels contain S, P, D, and F, right? Uh-oh. So that's why this is just a simplified version, and that's why we use hydrogen a lot, because it's simple. Uh, but again, all those electrons are moving around. So to recap that, ground state electron is going to jump up as it absorbs energy. It's going to be now in its excited state, and at some point it's going to jump back down. And when it does, it's going to give us that light energy. We want to remember that that light that we see is really in the form of energy and those electrons moving. So this is just to sum it up. I gave you a couple of lines. Read it over and write what you wish. Last thing I want to talk about is this Heisenberg uncertainty principle tells us that it is impossible to know both how fast an electron's going or uh, where the position is. So this is a little hopefully to get you to understand it. So this photon of light is going to strike this electron. It's going to attempt to figure out where that electron's position is. The problem is the impact actually changes that electron's velocities, right? It's going to give it a push. So now we have no idea where that electron is. So it is really impossible to know both. All right, that one question quiz today. Pause, see if you can come up with an answer. And hopefully that makes sense. All right, we will see you in class.